Lesson five, first activity. So we're sketching the graph of the derivative. Remember when we sketch the graph of the derivative, we plot points of the form x comma slope. So we're gonna pick a point where the graph is horizontal. That's right down here. Tangent line is flat. So the x in this case happens to be zero and the slope of this tangent line also happens to be zero. Okay, and then we'll pick another point. How about at negative uh, three, something like there. We graph a tangent line and we estimate its slope, negative four maybe. So when x is negative three, the slope of the tangent line is negative four. And then we'll pick x equals three. It's probably symmetric. When, uh, so that means the slope of this one must be positive four. So when x is three, the slope is four. So we're gonna plot those three points down below negative three, negative four, zero, zero, and three, four. Now, uh, this graph could be curvy going through these things. It also could be straight. We really don't know. I'm just gonna connect these with a straight line and say this is the graph of y equals f prime of x. If you want more accuracy than that, plot more points, right? Uh, I only picked three, but you could pick, you know, another one at negative two and at negative one and at negative four, as many points as you want. Okay, same deal with part B. Again, I'll start with my horizontal ones. So right there, slope is zero, and right here, the slope is zero. And so we'll estimate the coordinates here, uh, negative 1.8 comma slope is zero, and then over here, maybe symmetric, 1.8 comma zero. Okay, and let's pick a point maybe at negative three. So the slope of that tangent line looks pretty big. Maybe that's a five. And then how about at positive three? Looks the same. Maybe that's also a five. So these two points, negative three comma slope is five, positive three comma slope is five. And then we'll pick one point in the middle. How about at the origin? So this slope right here is downhill. Doesn't look quite as steep to me. So maybe that's a slope of negative three. For sure, you gotta give me a negative, maybe not quite as big as the fives that we were doing before. And so when x is zero, the slope is negative three. So we're gonna plot all of those points down below. Okay, so uh, negative three, five, and three, five. At zero, we estimated the slope was negative three, and then I think it was 1.80 and negative 1.80. So got those five points there. Yeah, I think we got them right. And then we'll connect the dots on the derivative, something curvy, smooth, don't make it have like a sharp point at the, at the bottom there. Uh, so there's the graph of y equals f prime of x. Number two, some conclusions we're supposed to draw. If y equals f of x is flat, then f prime is zero. If f is increasing, that meant that the tangent line was going uphill, so uh, any uphill um, line has a positive slope. So if f is increasing, then f prime is positive. If f is decreasing, then f prime is negative. We wanna be really precise. We're gonna be using this kind of language throughout the semester. So make sure you're clear about the use of the words increasing, decreasing, positive, negative, zero, and flat or constant. Okay, the graph of some function is below. Draw a quick uh, rough sketch of y equals f prime of x. Let's give it a shot. I don't see any places where the graph is horizontal, so um, I'll just pick like three points and draw three little tangent lines and then estimate slopes. So this first one here, maybe the slope is positive one. And so if I estimate the x value at that dot as like a half, so 0 0.5 comma one, remember x comma slope. Let's take a look at the next one. Um, so this slope is not as steep as that one, so maybe this slope is like a third. So if I estimate that as a third, and the x coordinate looks like it's around four and a half, maybe something like that, 4.5 comma 0.3. We'll just call this a 0.3. And then the last one, uh, this one is also uphill, but not quite as steep as the previous one. It's getting slightly less steep as we move to the right. So maybe that's a 0.2. And it looks like X is around nine, nine comma 0.2. And we'll use exactly the same axes uh, for this one. So here we go in green with our uh, plotting the derivative points. So 0.5 comma one, so that's up here. 
and then four and a half comma point three, four and a half point three is maybe there, and then nine comma point two. So this one is getting very close to the x-axis. Actually, it's got a horizontal asymptote at the x-axis, but then it starts to increase here. And the question is, how much does it increase by? Well, it's kind of hard to see because I marked up the graph, but this graph, the original graph here, gets really, really steep near the origin, super steep, actually. Um, and so this one actually is going to turn around, not turn around, but it's going to go up forever and have the y-axis as its vertical asymptote. Okay, so there's our rough sketch of y equals f prime of x. Number four, use the limit definition to find the derivative of f of x equals square root of x. So here's the beginning. So here's the definition. Then instead of uh, f of x, we're putting square root of x. And then instead of f of x plus h, we're putting square root of x plus h. It's really common but wrong to put this. Some students think that f of x plus h is really just f of x plus h. Oh, if only it were that easy, but it's not. What you're doing is substituting. Instead of x here, you are putting x plus h, right? Instead of x, you are putting x plus h. Okay, so our technique here is to rationalize wherever the radicals are. In this case, they're in the top. So I'm gonna multiply up here by the conjugate of the top, root x plus h root x, all we do is change the sign in between. And whatever I do on the top, I better do on the bottom as well. Copy that limit symbol. Um, on the bottom, I'm just copying. Don't distribute, you're only distributing based on where the radicals were at the start of the problem, which was only on top. So we are distributing on top. So foil here, lobster claw, however you do it, um, so uh, first times first, that's x plus h, the radicals cancel. The outers are uh, radical x plus h times radical x, and the inners are the same thing but negative, negative radical h, uh, x plus h times radical x, so they cancel, as usual. That's the idea with the conjugate. Uh, and then the last, minus root x times root x is minus x, those radicals cancel. Okay, good things happen here. Uh, the x's subtract away. So the top is really just h. And then I'm going to be super lazy and just cancel those h's right now. I can cancel h on the top, h on the bottom. I do need a placeholder on top now. It's a 1. So we're just going to put this one last time with the limit in the front, and then we don't have to write it anymore. 1 over root x plus h plus root x. Brand new limit. I'd like to try plugging h equals zero in. Uh, actually, probably should have tried it earlier in this problem. But if you plug h equals zero in, you're dividing by zero there, and then plug zero here, and you get root x minus root x. Oh, sadly, it's a zero on top and a zero on the bottom. But now we're not going to be sad because we can put h equals zero in. Don't write the limit anymore. Just change all of the h's to zeros. And so we get 1 over root x plus root x, which is 1 over 2 root x. So I'll write that as a big conclusion down here, just so that we're good with the notation. Um, for f of x equals, uh, what did we start with? I think it was just root x. If f of x is root x, then f prime of x is 1 over 2 root x. Our first algebraic derivative calculation. It won't be the last. Okay, so that's our derivative right there. Um, we will come back to do the uh, next demo soon.